You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Dog post game show, not a great night in College Park. Penn State fans. Penn State fans starts up behind us. Maryland gets 15 points. Penn State gets 51. Game was a little closer than that, statistically, but scoreboard wins on this one. Mason, what did you see? Man, I gotta stop taking this coat to this game because yeah. every time I do, uh, we suck. And, and that, that is um, not the best way to put it, but we just we fell apart there down the stretch. The game probably was scored better 41 to 15, not quite 55. But in reality, look, the standards not being met. The expectation that uh, this offensive line that's patched together with D3 and FCS players that can't compete at this level. And uh, apparently an all AAC corner can't get it done. But the defensive backfield, and our offensive line are just lackluster, and our quarterback is not the guy we thought he was. And once again, that's a pretty good summary. Now, the standard's not being met. It's hard to keep watching the same show over and over again, because that's what it seems like for Maryland. If you're going back to the beginning of the season with a little more realistic expectations, it said, and said that Maryland lost two NFL cornerbacks and didn't replace them. Lost three NFL level linemen, didn't replace them. Lost Rock Jarrett and Dante Demas and brought in Caden Grather. You'd say maybe this team isn't gonna be better than it was last year, um, and they're not. I, I don't understand why they left Leah in so long because you have to win next week. You have to go to Nebraska and find a way to win. You've got Nebraska, Michigan here, and then at Rutgers. You need one more win. Uh, you can go, go back and look at this game and say when Maryland needed to make plays early, they made mistakes. Penn State made plays, and that got them an early lead. Late in the game, the game just got away from Maryland there at the end. There was a moment when you thought maybe they'd at least make this close. They scored the 15th point, and then the wheels completely fell off this bus. We're going to take a listen to what Loxley said and don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think my horse has been beaten here. It's the same show week over week and hopefully we'll go on the road and, and play Nebraska and come out and play better. Nebraska lost tonight or today uh, and Rutgers lost to Ohio State today, so it's not over. But, boy, it's getting late in the season looking for that sixth win. Anything to add before we head inside? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, last week I called it a disaster of a program. I'm not sure how uh, long I could keep our monetization on these YouTube videos with uh, my comments. But uh, you can't lose to this team like this. They come into your recruiting territory. They take your players. They show up here and they beat your socks off and uh but 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 they didn't really physically beat the heck out of maryland until the very end yeah maryland you know the the unnecessary turnovers they went for it on fourth down when maybe they should have punted penn state goes for it on fourth down i believe four times maryland doesn't stop them once if you lose all six of those contests you lose the game like this if you had been able to make one or two plays you maybe don't win the game but that eight point spread is legit. It's when you make none of those plays that brings this in. So I'm not sure it's disaster like, but please continue. Yeah, I mean, on that point then then what is the standard? Like what what is the what's the bar for this program? I mean, legitimately, what what is it? Because certainly coach said, you know, it's the end of the season that we're ready to compete for championships and we're still out here in November losing fifty one to fifteen on our own field 
against a team that almost lost to Indiana two weeks ago. Offense hasn't been good, has let every other team hang around in the game, but we just really, yeah, you're right, we hand them the game. You know, we're not man enough to take it. Not only are we man enough to take it, but we're weak enough to give it away. And now we'll head inside and hear what Locks has to say, and hopefully there'll be a part two to tonight's first game show. I'm Wayne. That's Mason. Thank uh, to Rich Jack, Rick Jacklich and the Jacklich Law Group, and of course, Viner Forgates, your hometown Terp IT team. We'll see you after the presser. You can feel the energy starting to build in this game. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck the speed of the truck or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle. You're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the D.C. metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. says that you can put this all on him and while that is accurate you have to wonder in any relationship that anybody has whether it's work or at home or a football coach how many times and how many weeks you can say you can blame me before there's any ramifications or any changes and I had to do this over again I would have asked him at that point if it's on you that's fine what are you going to do different and what can us as media or fans expect to turn this around because at this point you've lost four in a row and as somebody pointed out to me the Orioles have won a game more recently than Maryland football the Orioles won on the 30th Maryland hasn't won since September 23rd and as I've said many times we're not going anywhere we're gonna be here for the whole time but you had a big house you had a lot of fans today it wasn't as big a Penn State crowd as it has been in other years and when it got to 32 to 31 to 15, you felt if you get one more stop, you might make a game out of this in the end. And at that point, it all went backwards. The stunning stat of the game, Maryland has negative 52 yards rushing. And I'm gonna have to go look through the record books and see when the last time was that that ever happened. So overall, it wasn't that bad a showing and Maryland didn't really get beaten up until the very end. At 31 to 15, this was still a game course it went the wrong way and and that's my wrap-up for today um, we are not going to Nebraska but of course we'll do a post-game show after the Nebraska game we'll be back here for Michigan for Mason Viner who's off camera for Ahmed who's holding the camera Bruce who's who took off already thank you so much for watching and please keep the comments coming and we will see you after Nebraska next Saturday good evening from College Park